I do all of my adjustments in Photoshop. I find that I can do everything here in one place and get through my editing as quickly as possible. When I open my raw files, they obviously open up into Camera Raw. So this is where I can make any uh, global adjustments to the files in terms of my white balance, um, adjusting any of the exposure and things like that. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and open all of those now. There are a million and one ways to do things and to achieve different results in Photoshop. So how I do it might not be the way that you do it. Uh, I encourage you to continue editing the same way you normally do. And if there are a few different tips and tricks that I can show you, then hopefully that can speed up your workflow as well. So I do work with a whole heap of actions. I'll wait for these photos to open. I'm not going to use actions at the moment to show you what I'm doing. We're going to use some adjustment layers, some copy layers, and go through our photos. All right, so we've got our first shot here, our first setup. First things first, I always look at my background. Then what I do is I come in and I have a look at my composition and whether or not I need to crop the image. Hopefully I don't. I could try to get my crop and my composition right in camera so that I don't need to, to remove information later on in post-production. And then I start to look at light, whether I need to add light or uh, reduce the exposure in any of the areas. I then have a look at the skin tones, I then soften the skin, and then I go about making any um, changes in terms of adding some more contrast, uh, removing little sort of um, blemishes and spots and things like that, and then I sharpen and save. So I use that same process with every image, always in that particular order. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look obviously at this background. I can see I've got um, quite a bit of a shadow up here at the top of the head and one down here. So I'm going to lighten those areas and to do that I can create an adjustment layer coming down to the bottom of my screen and I'm going to go into curves. You can use levels for this um, but like I said everyone's got their own little techniques and ways of doing things. What I like to do to make sure that I sample the right information that I'm going to be adjusting is I grab the little hand tool here I click on that and it turns into an eyedropper and then I come down and you can see the dot in the graph over here moving. So as I come to a lighter area you can see it move there and then bring it back to that darker area. So I'm going to click down and I'm just going to increase that information. So we'll close that. Now I'm going to invert that layer mask, Command I. So taking that layer off. Now I'm going to use a white brush to paint back onto the areas that I would like to add that to. Same goes for any brighter areas that you might need to tone down. So what I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer, go back to curves. This time I'm going to click on some of these brighter areas so over here and I'm just going to bring that exposure down. So I'm going to invert that layer mask. Okay so the, I've got my blanket exactly where I where I want it now. Um, I don't don't need to make any further changes. I can flatten those layers because I'm happy with them or I can leave them there but we'll just flatten them as we start to move through this process. Next thing I want to do now is have a look at the shape of the baby. I've got a few little sort of lumps and bumps coming out and this is where I'm going to take the file into liquify. So a new copy layer, command J, and I'm going to go up to filter liquify. I'm just going to make my brush a little bigger. The thing with liquify is you are going to move pixels. So you, you have to make sure that your brush is over the area that you're going to move and that the, your brush size is relative to the area that you're going to adjust. So here you can see this little bump coming out here. Now if I use a big brush obviously I'm going to move a larger amount of information. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to do that. And I'm going to just move that area that I need to. 
right, so let's flatten that. Okay, the next thing I need to do is see if I need to add any extra light or darken down some areas. And I'm having a look at the face here and the little hand underneath. So that hand is just a little bit bright and the face is a bit darker. If I also have a look over here in terms of the leg, uh, it's looking a little bright. So I know that I can lift the skin tones up in the face. But she did have warmer skin tones, slightly darker, so I don't want to lighten them too much. So we're going to create a, another curves adjustment layer and this is where I'm going to go with these sort of shadowy tones up here and I'm just going to lighten those. So if I hit the backslash key I can now see where I've painted and I've avoided the uh, nose where it was a little bright so we're not lifting that. But now we've, we've lifted the face and it is looking quite quite right. All right now I want to adjust my my red skin tones so take that back into um, a hue and saturation adjustment layer. This is where up the top here where it says master I'm going to make that change down to cyan and that's because cyan is at the opposite end of the color wheel to our reds and when we use our little eyedropper here and we sample the skin tones that we we want to work with down here around the nose and the the top of the lip there you can see now the little slide has moved to that area of those red tones and up here it's changed to reds too so now I can lighten those reds and I'm going to lighten it anywhere between 14 and 20 depending on the baby so about 15 for this little one and then I'm going to increase my hue there to around 3 so you can see before and after this is where I am going to invert that again. We've got red in our background, so I don't want to remove all of those red tones. I just want to work with the reds in the baby's skin. So my brush is at about 50%, and I'm just going to paint that on. We've got some red tones down there in the feet. All right, so we've got before and after, and if you can see there, that's where I've painted it on obviously not entirely over the baby and just in those areas that we want to reduce those red skin tones. Just bring a bit more there up into the side of the face. Okay, so now this is where I would play with my skin softening. Um, I will use an action for this because there are obviously a million ways to soften baby's skin, a million actions out there, there is portraiture, I created my own purely because I wanted to keep as much texture as I possibly could in the skin. I try not to over soften the skin but I want to leave as much texture as I can and as you can see, I can see texture, but we've just softened a lot of those other little blemishes. All right, so now what I want to do um, is soften the edge of my frame, Command J. I'm just going to grab the square marquee tool. I'm going to come down to the edge of the image. I'm going to feather that by around 500 pixels. Now the reason I'm feathering it so much is because these files are around 50 to 60 megabytes these raw files so if your raw files are anywhere between 20 to 30 megabytes then you probably only need to feather this by about 300 pixels so always check the the file size of your images and then that'll give you the information that you need to um, add things like blur and and so forth how big your files are I'm going to blur it by about a thousand pixels here just to give me a nice soft edge. I do need to be careful that I'm not creating any banding here. Now I'm going to add some contrast. And I've just spotted a little line up here from before, from when I was doing my warp tool. And I didn't erase the edge, which was bad of me to soften it. So I'm just going to use the patch tool there to remove that. But what I should have done is erased it off. 
Okay, so I haven't removed obviously any of the spots or anything like that. I always leave that to last. But to add contrast, I'm going to take it into a new copy layer. And I could use an adjustment layer, but we'll do it this way. And then because it makes it bigger. So you can see a little bit more information here. Okay, so we've got our, our curves palette up and we can see all of the information. We've got our whites and we've got our blacks. So this is where I like to push both my highlights and my shadows just to give me that little bit of pop of contrast. But to make sure I'm not losing detail, I hold my Option key in, the Alt key, Option key. And now when I move that slider, I can see where I'm starting to lose detail in the blacks. So it's giving me a guide. So I can have a look at that. Now I've got this, I'm going to add a layer mask so I can make sure that I can keep it off certain areas where I'm losing detail, which is that here. So I always push my blacks anywhere around sort of 10 to 12. Don't want to make it too contrasty. And my highlights, you can see I'm starting to lose highlights in the uh, headband and on the face there. So I'm going to bring that back, take it off the face. And it's just creeping in there on that cheek. So I'm going to bring it to about there and hit OK, add a layer mask and invert that. So now I can paint that on where I need it to be. So we'll go over the, the face there, the hands, the wrap, a little foot here, and the mouth. And I am avoiding those highlighted areas. So you can see before and after and it just gives that little bit of pop and um, and depth to the image which is what I love. Alright so that's pretty much it before I start coming in and removing any of the little blemishes. So we'll take a have a look at the before which didn't look too bad and now I take a look at the after. And this is where now I would come in with my spot healing brush and I would work my way around the image just removing anything that would not be there in say two weeks time. So now that we've got our image where we want it to be, um, we could save it. But that's pretty much what I do to all of my photos. So now that we've done that, we'll move through the rest of the images for this particular baby, our first model.